Let's talk about something else that's been really big in Canada recently, which is, and I hope I'm calling this correctly, the Freedom Convoy, um, which, you know, I'll let you tell me about this, but effectively the Canadian truckers self-organized this protest against government mandates. And it seems to have become a very large event. Um, I'm kind of just watching from the sidelines here through through media, but I'd love for you to tell me a bit about the movement um, and what impact it's having. So it all started um, when, well, let me step back. There, there's been a lot of frustration with the endless series of mandates and restrictions that uh, have continued ever since March of 2020. And the Canadian people are very deferential. Uh, we, you know, if the government tells Canadians that they have to do something for the collective health of the nation, most people say, hey, you know what, let's do it. And they did. Um, but it just never seemed to end. And increasingly of late, governments have been doing things that have no, that don't feel like they have a lot of scientific rationale. And, and the most obvious one was they said truckers who are doing inter uh, national shipments that is across the Canada US border have to show a vaccine uh, passport. And you got to think, okay, the, the, the trucker is sitting alone in his truck. He's not even interacting with other people other than to for a quick uh, stop at the gas station for a cup of coffee occasionally. But you have very little interaction. So even on the basis of the argument that we needed to re reduce transmission, um, it didn't seem to make a lot of sense. So a lot of truckers began uh, a protest that led to a, a convoy driving across the country. Um, and they've come from all over Canada. And they've been greeted uh, by Canadians at overpasses in small towns everywhere uh, as uh, um, with a great deal of support, people are waving flags. Uh, there, you know, there are sometimes five, 600 people at an overpass, mm. uh, waving them by, um, the convoy, uh, had thousands of truck trucks. Um, and it just grew as the, as they traveled from Western Canada towards the nation's capital and, and from the East as well. And now they are converged, uh, on parliament Hill where they parked their trucks, um, and uh, they're basically saying it's time to end uh, the mandates and the restrictions and give Canadians their freedoms back. Beautiful. Well, we need more of that in the world, especially after the past 24 months. I did hear that maybe they raised some money for that and perhaps some of it was seized and then they started raising some money in Bitcoin instead. Was that um, how did that work? I don't know anything about that. I, I did hear that GoFundMe was not handing over their donations at first, but I, I really don't have any knowledge about how that, that all, all transferred. I'm not personally involved with the organization of it. I'm just mm -hmm. giving my support to, to individual truckers who are standing up for their freedoms and livelihoods. That's great. Yeah. And I've noticed something else on your Twitter. You know, you've been very outspoken on this issue of COVID being used as a never ending excuse for power hungry authorities to replace individual freedom with state control, as you write. Um, I'm paraphrasing there, not, not an exact quote. So, and you tweeted recently, I've noticed you've got, you're retweeting this particular tweet about different instances of that. And mm -hmm. one of one you, one of these retweets was uh, the federal health agency tracked 33 million cell phones during COVID and mm -hmm. is planning to track population movements for roughly the next five years. Whoa, what like what in the world is going on here? And um, maybe you tell me a little bit about that and other instances of this never ending excuse being used. Yeah, this story broke uh, about a month ago now. Uh, the government was tracking cell phone tra uh, traffic. Now they claimed that the reason was that they, they, they that that it would help them better understand population movements and therefore the the transmission of the virus and but it was revealed they want to keep doing this for another five years and nobody has told us that the government expects the covid crisis to go on for another half decade mm -hmm. which really raises the question of why then would they want to track the population for that length of time mm -hmm. and um you know you look at that example the first thing trudeau did when COVID hit was he put forward a bill, 
ostensibly to provide COVID aid to people in need, but the, it contained a provision allowing him to raise any tax to any level for any reason for two years without parliamentary sign-off. Uh, that is unprecedented in our parliamentary tradition. I've never heard of it anywhere in 800 years. Um, and, and of course, there's just the, uh, they put forward a bill to censor what you can see and say online, mm. ostensibly to promote Canadian content. So you have these bureaucrats in Ottawa protecting Canadiana. You know, mm -hmm. you know we don't want anybody in Canada hearing from Robert Breedlove. He's not uh, um, sufficiently uh, um, Canadian in his outlook. Uh, he hasn't eaten a, a beaver tail in the Byward market and uh, he doesn't skate down the canal. Um, uh, so I guess he's not, his content would not be considered Canadian enough. And they wanted to censor what Canadians could see in order to keep out what they consider to be outside voices. Um, and the bill actually got defeated, but everyone from traditionally left of center artists and academics and library associations actually had to rise up and oppose this thing because it was so bloody Orwellian. Right. Um, but this, these are examples, Robert, of the, the power grabs that we've seen again and again since COVID, always with some altruistic justification, uh, but never uh, a, an authentic one. Yes, uh, there always seems to be uh, some type of moral camouflage put on these different political actions that in almost every instance that I've seen is div divergent from what its true intention appears to be. Absolutely. Um, and one one of the things <laughs> I think it was Trudeau that said this that something about unacceptable views recently had some quote. I mean, it's, we've gone so far awry in the past twenty four months, and this all seems very unprecedented to me. I've never experienced yeah. anything like this. Um, I in my study of history, I've seen it a lot. How are you experiencing this? Like, is where are we? What what's going on? It seems like history has taken a lot of zigs and zags. Um, where are we today and where do we go from here? I, I think that some governments are trying to instill constant fear um, mm -hmm. in order to sustain their exceptional powers. Um, they are trying to make Canadians or, or around the world and other places too, I suspect it's true, but trying to make the citizens fear each other in order to justify permanent government overreach and um you know and, and so i i think the governments that want to take away liberty always have to make people afraid mm -hmm. and that's certainly what our government is doing they're constantly heaping fear and uh, doom on the population um doom about all of the scary people that that you have to worry about that live in your country and are on the internet doom about um, how uh, dangerous uh, life has become uh, and doom that always has as its solution more governmental control over what people see and say and how they spend their money and so on and so forth. So I think what people need to do is reassert their self-confidence and insist on reclaiming the, the, the ancient liberties that have survived many crises. Mm -hmm. You know, like what blew me away is they tried to shut down our parliament um, I think Trudeau wanted it to be shut down for a very long time when COVID started. When the Nazis were bombing um, London, the British Parliament kept meeting. They would meet in cathedrals and in other places to avoid danger, but they would still meet. Mm -hmm. And that was probably the greatest crisis um, in modern um, British history, but Churchill was still determined to go in and be accountable to the British people for um, he, he, because he understood that that was the very democracy he was defending in the war. And so, yes, if they were able to do that during the war, they were able to keep freedom of expression alive, then surely we can do that here in Canada during a viral pandemic. Well said, Pierre, look, I'm really grateful to have you on this side of the fight for freedom. Um, I think it's more important than ever. Um, and thank you for being a voice of reason and sanity in this increasingly crazy world of ours. 
Uh, I'm sure my audience knows where to find you, but in case they don't, could you please let us know where they can find out more about you or your work? Yeah, click on uh, uh, withpierre.ca, withpierre.ca. Uh, 